I saved myself thousands of pounds at building a DIY home golf simulator. But in the process, I made loads of mistakes which cost me time and money. I don't want you to make the same mistakes as me. So I'm about to reveal my 10 most expensive golf simulator mistakes and exactly what you can do to avoid them. This mistake is something that could cost you a lot of money if you don't do it well. When I first bought my artificial turf, I put my hitting mat directly on top of it. And what I found was, despite the mat being extremely heavy duty, it actually started to slip and slide around when I was hitting off it. This was obviously pretty annoying, and mainly it caused my visual alignment to the screen to be slightly off center, which messed with my head when I was lining up my next shot. At first, I bought some anti-slip carpet grip material because I'd read online that it solves a problem. It doesn't. Instead, what I eventually did, and what you should consider doing, is carefully cutting out a section of your artificial turf and sinking it into your hitting mat. This eradicates almost any chance of your mat slipping and moving around when you're hitting the ball off it, and it also gives you a much neater and professional finish. This mistake ended up costing me a couple of hundred pounds in electrician fees. I was using a couple of five meter extension leads running around my room and it just looked scruffy. So this tip will ultimately give your simulator room a much more finished and professional look. I'd highly recommend installing at least three or four plug sockets right where your PC or laptop is going to be. And I'd also recommend installing one in the ceiling for your projector. This next mistake cost me around £400. Now, when I initially set up my simulator room, I wanted to use a 32 inch TV as my monitor rather than buying a PC monitor, just because I was gonna use it for watching sports and TV, as well as a second screen for my simulator. So I opted to buy the cheapest second hand TV that I could find, but what I didn't consider was that this cheap TV was actually only a 720p resolution. So playing simulator courses on GS Pro and the Golf Club 2019 just didn't look that good at all. In fact, the YouTube videos that I was putting out at the time had better quality and better graphics than my actual experience playing on the simulator software. So if you're using a TV as a second screen, then definitely make sure that it's 4K resolution or at the very least 1080p. Putting on a golf simulator is never the most true to real life, but there is a way that you can make it a little more realistic. I initially put artificial turf down on the floor of my home golf simulator, but I soon realized that when I was putting on the Golf Club 2019 and GS Pro, because of the length of the turf, it just held up and didn't roll out like a true putt on a green. So I cut out a strip of my artificial turf and I installed a putting mat from Amazon so now I can put out on my golf simulator and judge the distance a little more accurately. An even better idea would be to install a lower pile turf or even some specialist putting turf just in front of your hitting mat. My first golf simulator setup was a full enclosure built using one inch metal conduit piping. This was great outdoors, but when I transferred it indoors, it made my space feel even more claustrophobic than it already is. It was too big and too bulky. So my advice would be to do what the professional installers do and build a wooden frame for your screen, fix the slotted metal galvanized angle around it, and then attach your impact screen using some heavy duty zip ties or bungee cords. This gives your enclosure a much more professional and neater finish, and it'll probably work out cheaper than the metal piping does anyway. To get a 5% discount on launch monitors and all other golf simulator related products, then head over to Golf Swing Systems and use the discount code HANDICAP5 at the checkout. When I built my home golf simulator, I knew that it was gonna be touch and go as whether or not I could swing all the clubs in my bag in this small room. I thought I might be able to get away with hitting my driver, but in actual fact, I was nowhere near. And this was mainly due to the height of my ceiling. The recommended ceiling height for a golf simulator is about three meters or 10 feet. And as I've only got about 2.4 meters of height in here, 
The longest club that I can use is a six iron. It keeps me swinging, but it doesn't give me that full golf simulator experience that I wish I had. Better graphics make for a better experience in your home golf simulator. But when I built my own gaming PC to run the Golf Club 2019 and GS Pro, I built it on a budget and I bought the 1650 Super graphics card. Now this GPU works absolutely fine and I can run each of those simulator software smoothly. But as Golf Simulator software courses are constantly being developed and upgraded, they're using more and more graphical power and my PC is slowly being left in the dust meaning I'm having to run the newer courses on GS Pro in a lower graphics quality just so that I can play them. What I'd highly recommend is getting a graphics card that's gonna future-proof you for at least a fair few years. So whatever your budget is, try to stretch it a little bit further and get a higher quality graphics card just to save you having to update it again in a couple of years time. If you're enjoying this video, hit that like button and subscribe to Handicap Golf, where you'll find more amazing golf content like this simple and easy to use ebook that explains how average weekend golfers like you and I can afford to build a golf simulator in the comfort of your own home. A good projector is one of the key components of a golf simulator. And my first projector was great, or so I thought. It worked a treat but it wasn't until I got a new projector that I realized what I was missing out on. My old one wasn't a short throw projector and it always cast a shadow onto my impact screen. I could deal with it, but when I got my new short throw projector and had no shadow issues at all, it was like a whole new immersive experience. So definitely get yourself a short throw projector, but do your research on them because they can be tricky. I've made a few videos simplifying projectors on my channel, so if you're building a golf simulator, be sure to subscribe and check out the links in the description below this video once you've finished watching. There's not a lot worse than loading up that bucket list golf course on your simulator for the very first time, buzzing that you're actually gonna play a golf course that you'll probably never get to play in real life, only for your computer to crash, so you can't actually play it at all. That happened to me when trying to play the iconic Georgia Golf Club on GS Pro. And the reason for this was because I didn't have enough RAM in my gaming PC. At the time, I had 8GB of RAM when I first built my PC, because I was trying to keep the cost down. And whilst I could still play most of the courses, the more recently designed ones take a lot more memory to load up, and therefore, I had to buy some extra RAM. 16 gigabytes should be a sufficient amount of RAM to run any golf course on your simulator. But I've learnt my lesson and I went for 32 gigabytes of RAM this time, just so that I don't come up short again in the future. Before I reveal my number one mistake, I just wanna highlight one problem that I've never heard anybody else talk about before. Three years ago, I built this golf simulator in a very small garage that has no windows. And you'd be forgiven for thinking that having no windows in a golf simulator is a good thing because it would improve the image from your projector. And that's true. But because I can be in here for hours at a time playing world famous courses or working on my golf game, the lack of ventilation in such a small space can become quite uncomfortable and not very good for the lungs. I've had to buy an air filtering unit, which in all honesty, hardly does anything. So if you're building a sim room, especially a small one, then I'd definitely consider getting some sort of ventilation put in there. So many people talk about having enough height in their golf simulator room to swing all the clubs in their bag. But not many people talk about this final mistake that's on my list. When I built my golf simulator room, I knew I only had 2.4 meters of height and therefore, I resigned myself to the fact that I probably wouldn't be able to swing my driver in my golf sim. But another measurement that I didn't consider at the time would have stopped me from swinging my driver, even if I did have the recommended three meters of height. I've only got two and a half meters of width in my simulator room, and even with an offset center line, which basically means I hit the ball from more towards one side of the room than the other, I would still need more width than this. For a comfortable space for both left and right-handed golfers to swing a driver in your simulator room, 
you'll need about four and a half meters of width. You can get away with a bare minimum of around three meters of width, which might result in you hitting from an offset position like I do. But to be able to hit from the center of your room and into the center of your screen, the more space you have, the better. But there is one more dimension that will determine if you've got enough space to build a home golf simulator. And that is revealed in this video that's on the screen right now.